you made your house a reality. Homeschooling yourself on loans, color coding listings, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. If you can ace house hunting, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. It takes a village to help somebody get their diploma. It changes your whole life. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Nothing to do this week? Don't miss another event. Go to blacksinsanantonio.com for our event calendar. The home of the largest business directory in San Antonio with an African American focus. Sign up today for our weekly e-blast and text message alerts. Help us make this a better community. Connect. Empower. Grow. Please join me as I host this year's Black Worship Clergy Hall of Fame Dinner, Monday, February 18th at the Antioch Sports Complex. Come experience an evening of fun, fellowship, and food as we induct Pastor Robert P. Forte Sr., pastor of the Mount Gilead Baptist Church, and Pastor and Ray D. Brown. Pastor of the Resurrection Baptist Church. I look forward to seeing you there. Pastor Kevin Pastor Nelson, Kevin Nelson. Be, blessed. be blessed. Because it matters to you, it matters to us. It is Black Video News with your host, Keith Scott. Black Friday Live. San Antonio. Here we go. I want to thank you all for tuning in to Black Friday Live. I'm your host, Keith Scott. You know where we come with hot topics and always with the special guests. New content, new year right here on Black Friday Live. It's a really busy month this month. Dream Week is taking place. There are a lot of events that are going to be taking place throughout San Antonio for the whole month of January leading up to MLK Day, which we have the largest march in the country. Yes, that's right here, right here in San Antonio. We do have the largest march. Joining us today to talk about an event that's gonna be taking place during Dream Week is KDML, a gospel radio station, radio personality, Miss Keisha Edwards, and then also joining us uh, we've got a queen in the building, Miss Jordan Allen, which was also the fourth annual shutdown gospel queen for 2018. And then also, I was told you're a 2019 marquee too. So thanks for joining us today. How are you all doing? Actually, I'm doing great. You're doing great. Just blessed. Just happy to be here. Well, thanks, Keisha. I mean, big fan, KDML, doing your thing over there at Gospel Radio Station right here in San Antonio. Been around for years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tell my viewers a little bit about yourself, Thank Keisha. You. Well, I am the Gospel Diva KP over at Gospel, I say, <laughs> I'm sorry, Gospel KDML Praise Radio. I am yeah. the founder. I um, founded back in 2015. It was created in memory of my brother and my sister, um, both who have passed away. And so every year since we started the radio station, we have a gospel showcase. Yeah. And artists, they come from nationwide to be part of this event. And so every year there's a recipient that we bless. So this year, the 2019 recipient is going to be Miss again, Jordan Allen. Yeah, and congratulations, show yeah. Thank you. And Thank what the showcase you. is, it's just a display of talents and gifts that God has blessed so many with. 
And we actually have some gospel artists coming in. We have some sneakers coming in too. Yeah, we're gonna be talking yeah. about because you got yeah. a remarkable yeah. lineup. Mm -hmm. But Jordan, how does it feel to be, you know, 2018 and 2019 and, and a part of such rich history? Feels great. With, with Gay DML. Feels great. It does, yes, huh? Sir. Well, congratulations and Thank thanks you. for being on the set here. And you know, I was told that you'd be making a lot of impact in this city too, huh? As a yes, community sir. activist. What's some of the things you'd be doing here in San Antonio? Uh, Miss Fiesta. Miss Fiesta Especial. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just go right into it, Keisha, because you got a really nice lineup for, that's going to be taking place this year. And, I mean, you got John Stevens. You got some really awesome recording artists, Kara, Kara Nicole. Tell us a little bit about this lineup. Well, actually, the lineup and the way it works, I, I put out on social media that the gospel showcase is coming. So gospel artists will start sending in emails and they will, you know, want to be a part of it. And the special thing about it is they're all coming on their own. Right. Yes. It's all volunteer. They're coming from Louisiana, Mississippi. We have them coming from Los Angeles and they pay their own way because they're being a blessing by giving back. And so we do it every year. Um, during Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday birthday weekend. And we are official mm -hmm. part of the Dream Week. So yeah. it's, it's exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. I see you got the Dream Week button on there. Yes. It really is a remarkable mm -hmm. lineup. Mm -hmm. KDML Praise Radio is presenting this gospel showcase mm -hmm. with all of these different remarkable artists mm -hmm. that are going to be here. Uh, when's the event taking place? The event is taking place on January the 19th, 2019. It will be at the yeah. Vertical Church. That's 42, 18,000 Oaks Drive here in San Antonio, Texas. It's actually Vertical Church. Okay. Pastor Will Bonds is the pastor there. Okay. And so mm -hmm. this will be our second year having it at that location. And the host is all the way from Houston, Texas, National Gospel Recording Art Artist, Minister Cedric Ford. He is yeah. the host. Wow, you, got, you yes. have a, re God is moving, you have yes. a remarkable lineup this yes. year. Absolutely. And, and I wanted to thank you for even bringing Jordan on the set too. You know, she's making yes. an impact, you know, doing what she's doing in a part of this year's 2018, 2019 Judge, Judge, what, Duchess and Marquis. And that's actually with the Fiesta. Right, that's yeah, for the that's Fiesta. That's for the Fiesta. Okay. And the, the way I met Jordan is also, uh, I work with the NFLPA. Okay. Former players, San Antonio, Austin, Texas chapter. And we were we were at an event called Bowling with the Stars. Okay. And so the Ferrari Kids Foundation, it's a foundation that is, helps, I don't want to say help, but it, it caters to children with special needs okay. or maybe some developmental skills. Right. And so they were there and, and I, I brag about it because Jordan, she just stood out. She was just amazing. And I remember walking out the door with Priest Holmes. Okay. And, you know, he was signing so many autographs and I'm walking out the door and, and somebody said, excuse me, can I get your autograph? So Priest mm -hmm. Holmes turned around and he's like, sure. And she's like, no, I want the gospel diva. I was like, oh, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, she's just been a blessing. I follow her on social media. Um, she had surgery not too long ago. Yeah. And I'm worried. I'm like, okay, I need to get to the hospital so I can see Jordan. And I looked on social media the next day. She's up leading a parade in the children's ward. The children's wing. I can't mean, stop Jordan from stop. putting no, in the work. Can't, huh? stop, can't stop, Jordan. won't stop, huh, Jordan? Can't no, stop. stop. No, I'm telling you, she at school, she, she just got her Letterman jacket. Oh, Over wow. Over at Madison High School. Yes, so, uh -huh. And can you tell us, what, where did you get that at? Your Letterman jacket. Uh, what, what you do? Was it, was it bowling? Bowling, bowling. Field, That's basketball. right. Basketball. Oh, let them wow. know, let them know. That's yes. awesome, Yes, yeah, so she's a sweetheart, and... And you know my brother Michael, he, um, you know, he was special needs, but you would never know. Every day he had a smile on his face, yeah. just always smiling. And you know, people who you know are in a better way in life, they're grumpy. They're, mm. but you know, he just had a special, loving, warming spirit. And Jordan, she's just like that. And so, yeah, she really yes. is. She lit up the room when she came in here. I was it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. we're just excited to have her and to have everyone um, come down and be a part of the showcase. Now, the tickets are only $10. Okay. But if you're 18 years 
and younger, you get them free. So for your $10 tickets and for your free tickets, you go out to eventbrite.com, get your tickets, get your free tickets. This is a family event. So y'all want to be in a place, make no mistake about it, the Gospel Diva will be in the place. The Gospel That's Diva, right. boy, I tell you, you got a yes. remarkable lineup. Yes. January yes, 19, Jordan, thanks yes. for being on Black Friday Live, okay? okay. Keep up the great work. Gospel, Thank you. Gospel yes, Diva, yes. such a pleasure to have you on. Make sure you tell all your peeps over there, KDML, a hello from Black Video News. Man. Yeah. What an exciting event that's going to be taking place January 19th, Dream Week. You can see this remarkable lineup as the Gospel Diva said. Tickets are still available. You may want to check this one out. Hey, I'm Keith Scott, yeah. man. It's always a blast. Thanks for checking us out right here. Hey, if you want to be on the show, if you're making an impact in your community, if you're making an impact in the industry, please send me an email. You can reach me at kscott at Black Video News. Come on, let's get you on the show. Let's talk about what you're doing in the community, what you're doing in your industry. I want to thank the Gospel Diva. I want to thank Jordan Allen. Keep up the great work, work Jordan. We'll see you next time right here on Black Video News. As always, be encouraged. Please join me as I host this year's Black Worship Clergy Hall of Fame Dinner. Monday, February 18th at the Antioch Sports Complex. Come experience an evening of fun, fellowship, and food as we induct Pastor Robert Pastor P. Forte, Robert P. Forte Sr., Forte. pastor of the Mount Gilead Baptist Church, and Pastor and Ray Pastor D. Brown, Brown, pastor of the Resurrection Baptist Church. I look forward to seeing you there, Pastor Kevin pastor Nelson. Kevin Nelson. Nelson. Be blessed. Hello, I'm Tony Hendricks, Chief Operating Officer at Lewis Funeral Home. Lewis Funeral Home has been serving San Antonio and surrounding areas for over 100 years. Lewis Funeral Home's ultimate goal is to help those families in their time of need. If your family is ever in need, please feel free to call us at Lewis Funeral Home, 210-227-7281, or check us out on our website at lewisfuneralhome.com. time I tried Vicodin, it was laying around my mom's house. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. Nothing to do this week? Don't miss another event. Go to blacksinsanantonio.com for our event calendar. The home of the largest business directory in San Antonio with an African American focus. Sign up today for our weekly e-blast and text message alerts. Help us make this a better community. Connect. Empower. Grow. Thank you all for tuning in to Black Friday Live. I'm your host, Keith Scott. Man, I'm excited. 2019, you know when we come with hot topics and subject matter, but I'm excited about all of the new content, the new guests. And let's just go right into this episode. I've got long life community advocate right here joining us on Black Friday Live, Mr. Tyrone Darden. How we doing, Tyrone? I'm good. I'm good. Happy to be here. Happy New I'm Year, blessed. man. Blessed and highly favored. Man, good to see you, Tyrone. Yes, good to be seen. Man, Tyrone, let's go right into it okay. because, man, I know you care about this community. Definitely. Anybody that knows Tyrone Darton knows you care about the community, mm -hmm. not just the city of San Antonio, but District 2. 
and really all of the districts. You're an advocate for the city. But let's just go right into it, man. You know, we just lost here in District 2 on the east side of San Antonio, Texas. Our uh, councilman just resigned, mm -hmm. Councilman Cruz. Mm -hmm. Why did Councilman Cruz lead this office, so, Tyrone? So, so Cruz is a, um, he's a lawyer by trade, right? Okay. So uh, I, I would think um, every lawyer aspires to be a judge. That's just the pecking order of the next move. Right. An opportunity came for him uh, to be a, a, a judge, um, and he took it. Uh, I think it's a great move. He's a young African-American male. He'll be dealing with juveniles. He'll be a great face uh, for those who are kind of transitioning right. uh, from that that criminal side to to a second chance, a second opportunity. So uh, I'm, you know, congratulations to Cruz. Yeah. I think it's a big move for the community. Yeah, you can't stop improvement. Can't stop improvement. You can't, man. You mm -hmm. can't stop improvement. You can't stop growth. And that's actually what we've been seeing on the east side. Mm -hmm. We've been seeing a lot of growth here on the east side. We've seen some changes. Councilman Cruz didn't uh, have an opportunity to finish out his term. Yes. So here we are, we're left with what, five months left? Yeah, it's, I mean, at this point, it's three or four months left. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a short period of time. It's a short period of time, Tyrone, and I'm glad you took the time out to talk to us right here on the mm -hmm. set about what's taking place in this district. Okay. A lot of people are concerned in this district. We got some really San Antonios that have been here that take a lot of pride on yes. the east side. Yes. Uh, there was an appointment there. You know, a lot of people kind of threw their hat in the ring mm -hmm. here in District 2. Mm -hmm. A lot of people showed up. A lot of people wanted to go ahead and, you know, fill in for crews for these last remaining months. But they decided to go with Art Hall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you believe that that was a fair appointment? Well, and, and, and I think um, it's fair to look at the entire process, right? So there was a vacancy. And in that vacancy, the city charter says it's an either or, right? right. It depends on, 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 on time. So the either or is the city council does an appointment or there is a special election. Okay. Well, uh, I guess Cruz got his appointment, his, his information on the appointment at one point, he talked to you know the council, the mayor potentially, and the uh, city manager, city the city uh, uh, attorney to see what the options were. Right. The options the option was open to have a special election. Um, of course, there's costs, mm -hmm. um, there's time, um, the void in regards to there not being representation in the seat is still there. So, with that being said, uh, on that end, Cruz opted to resign at a point to where the council could make the selection as right. opposed to the people making the selection. I think in hindsight, um, I, I haven't talked to Cruz on, on that on that decision. I think in hindsight, a lot of people probably would have preferred um, that we just had a special election. Yeah. Uh, nothing against Art. Um, Art's a good guy, um, and, and I plan on working with him right. over this uh, interim time. But at the end of the day, uh, I, I personally don't believe Art was the people's choice. I believe it was the council's choice, which they had the right to make. Okay, so 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 by you saying that, Tyrone, mm -hmm. you don't believe. So okay, who's your preferred candidate? Well, um, again, it's, it's important to look at process. So when when Cruz made his announcement, um, a group of uh, homeowner association and, and, and um, neighborhood association presidents came together to to talk about the vacancy, right. and so um, they called for a meeting uh, along with help from. Uh, Baptist Minister Union, um, other community members, even our state representative, uh, Barbara Griffin Hawkins, was involved. And uh, the first meeting was at Eastwood uh, Community Church. Okay, I remember uh, when that meeting yeah. took place. About 100 people showed up. Mm -hmm. um, candidates showed up, people that were interested. They spoke. The criteria was laid out in regards to, um, you know, what was the community looking for, education, experience, political background, um, all those things. And so the, the question was asked, do we want to do this again? Right. Uh, and uh, the community said yes. So went over to Bethel that next week. Um, over 125 people showed up to that one as well. The candidates that were present spoke on different issues, shared their platform, shared why they should get that vote. And when it was all said and done, uh, Cruz, Cruz didn't attend, but the information was passed. But when it was all said and done, Lester Bryant, um, Derek Hillier, okay. and uh, Chris Dawkins, Okay. were basically the top three that came out of that pool. Okay, okay. In fairness, um, Stephen Lucky was a candidate. I think he had um, some 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 other engagements, and Walter Perry was as well. But for those who attended uh, that one, uh, it was an overwhelming um, support for Hillier. So for me, 
um, I went with the process and the process said that Hillier was the, uh, the, the applicant, the candidate, the community member that we wanted to go with. Okay. So we talk about the fireman. Yes. Okay. So let's address that. The fireman, there was a lot of, you know, accusations that came out in reference to, you know, when he stepped up trying to fill this role, what's going on, you know, with his background, where, 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 where did all of this come out, you know, with the background? And of course, you know, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. They're going to dig up something if they can find it, mm -hmm. but where did it come from? So, Tyrone? so, so first let me say this, um, because for me, I think the biggest issue was he was the fireman. He wasn't the father. He wasn't the husband. He wasn't the mentor. He wasn't the, the person who ran into burning buildings, regardless of the situation, to help people. He okay. was just a fireman. Right. And the fireman had a negative connotation <clears throat> because of what was going on down the city hall with the union. Right. And, and which and, is and, still going and, on. Which is still going on. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was that was the biggest error for me on the council labeling him as the fireman as opposed to as a man, as an applicant. But but to address um, the dossier, yeah. and, and, and I even found that to be weird. Like, you know, for those who paid attention to the, the, the presidential election, um, there was a dossier brought out on President Trump. Yeah. And so those things are still even being investigated. How, how do you compile this dossier? So a one-page fact sheet, I guess, of the career of Mr. Hillier was uh, presented um, to the city government for public review. At some point, it was leaked. Uh, uh, it was said in the Revolve Report as well as the San Antonio Express News on several occasions that our city manager, Cheryl, Cheryl Scully, uh, gave the okay to pass that information on to Robert Rivard, even with pending, um, pending uh, open records uh, requests not being filled yet. To me, uh, you know, that was an issue yeah. because- And she's on, a, when we say our city manager, uh -huh. she's on her way out. She is, and I think that, um, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I believe the city manager has done a great job um, bringing San Antonio. We, we're the number seven uh, uh, ranked city in the United States of America. Yeah. But for those of us who live here, we know it's, it's, it's country still. Like we really haven't embraced that. In her 13 years here, she's kind of moved us to that point to where we really are number seven, and we're looking to be number five. Uh, yeah. With that being said, though, I think it got personal. I think that... Um, the situation between the firefighter union and the city got personal. And anytime you you involve personalities into politics, into right. policy, you know we make a lot of uh, uh, judgment errors. I think that was a judgment error to 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 leak that information about that man, not about that firefighter, about that man, because they didn't give that man an opportunity to present himself like every other woman and man did uh, during that process. Yeah, he really didn't. It, it was it was in and out. Yeah. You know, he really didn't. It was a short period of time. But, you know, Tyrone, a lot of people and for our viewers in this district on the east side, mm -hmm. we're talking about District 2 right here on the east mm -hmm. side of San Antonio, Texas. There are a lot of seniors in this district, mm -hmm. a lot of people like yourselves, mm -hmm. advocates and activists mm -hmm. that have been making an impact mm -hmm. in this in this city mm -hmm. right here in this community for a long time. And there are a lot of concerns about this district right mm -hmm. now. What, you know, from your perspective, Tyrone, and, and, and like I said, you're an advocate and you're, you've are you been putting in work. Mm -hmm. Man, what's the future? What's it looking like for District 2 right here in San Antonio? I think if we don't, if we don't come together, there won't be a future. I think we'll be absorbed by District 1. We'll be absorbed by uh, the mayoral seat, that it won't be true representation in our district because as a, as a people, as a community, we really haven't come together. One of the things that Mayor Nimber told me, um, it was a group of us that stayed after uh, uh, Crucial, well, not even after Crucial, before when they made the three finalists, he came down he, off the dais and he spoke to us and he said that um, you guys don't represent the entire community. And so we were trying to understand what he meant by that. Okay. He said, well, you had your process, but there were people calling us saying, you know, we don't agree with that process. There are people saying that we weren't a part of that process. There are even people saying, you know what, we're not going to support you if if you go with that process. So I don't like to use the the imagery, but the saying of crabs in the barrel, you know, you know, you're trying to inch your way to the top and then you put you down, put yourself down, you put your brother down, you gotta start over. What he basically told us was Yes, you guys did what you did, but it was people calling us undoing what you did. Right. If we continue those things in our community, 
we will, we will not have a voice. We yeah, won't we'll, be able to call the mayor. We won't be able to call the city manager. We won't be able to call the city attorney and say, this is how we feel because they won't believe us. Yeah. And, 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 and that goes back to May when there's an election. At some point, someone's going to run someone from, out, from outside of the community and make that our voice, knowing that that person doesn't represent us. So, so we have to be careful. If we don't come together, if we don't, it's okay to agree to disagree. It's not okay to dismantle a process. Yeah, we got to do better in this community. We got to do better, like you said, with the grab uh, and the barrel mentality. Yes, yes. We got to do better in this community, man. It, it's only such a short amount of yes. African Americans mm -hmm. in this city when mm -hmm. we talk about 7%. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we got to do better. Tyrone, man, I know a lot of people care. Mm -hmm. Let's have this conversation real soon because I want to get you uh, back on the set to talk about okay. what's taking place in the district. You know, we care about this district. Black Video News mm -hmm. is on the east side of yes. San Antonio, That's Texas, it. and we're thankful we're here. But we want to make keep making an impact in this in this city mm -hmm. and in this community, and we care about the district too, yes. man. So. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time out to yes, talk sir. to us right here. Long time community activist. And, and he don't like me to say activist. <laughs> he likes me to say advocate. Mm -hmm. But he's both to me. I want to thank you, Tyrone, for taking the time out to talk to us right here on Black Video News. We're going to keep you informed with what's taking place here in the district, in District 2, when it comes to the council seat. We've got three months of art hall. It really is a short time, really not a lot of time to get anything done mm -hmm. in the community. And Tyrone, maybe you could come back and tell us, because I know it's going to be interesting to see who throws their hat in the ring this year. Definitely, definitely. There's a lot of people interested. I mean, uh, there were 13 people that uh, applied for the appointment. I would assume at least half of those um, do the same and another half that didn't uh, come out. So we, we're looking at probably anywhere from 10 to 15 uh, candidates, potential okay. candidates. All right, well, good. I'll be looking forward to having that conversation with you again real soon. I want to thank you all for tuning in to Black Friday Live. I'm your host, Keith Scott. We'll see you next time right here on Black Friday Live. As always, be encouraged.